Oh. Is that good enough? <laughs> yeah. So you guys can see, right? It's pretty clear. So once they once they get comfortable, then they kind of need to know who's who who's the leader, who's the alpha, and um, you know there. Some people think that you only need to make friends with a horse. There's never, it is never a leadership thing. And once they get comfortable enough with people, just like they are with other horses, it's very easy. You just watch a few horses play together and you'll very quickly understand they're, one of them is trying to be the alpha and the other ones are following along or vice versa. Or, or they're going to have it out and figure out who's the alpha. Well, it shouldn't be that big of a surprise that that happens with us once they get comfortable with us. Okay. Now they're not trying to, um, you know, usually even horses that are being aggressive, it's, it's, it's not, there's no reason to take it personally because it's not personal to them. It's just a matter of he doesn't want her by them right now. You know, later on he might be like, can you scratch me right here? And, and he might want that. Um, but there is a, there is a time that we need to, um, be a little more alpha, alpha. Now he may or may not do that with me because he doesn't know me. Um, as much as he knows um, Nettie. But what I'm going to do to start this off, I could, what, what, what somebody would typically do is drive the horse around, right? We'd push them around in their own pen. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and own his space. And that is the most fundamental way to be the alpha over a horse. And ironically, that's actually a lot more palatable to them by just owning space versus yield your hindquarters, now see, he's gonna come maybe investigate owning my space. So I'm just gonna wave the stick and say, um, actually, nope, this is my spot. And I've had, I've had many horses, probably half a dozen in my career, that this was the starting spot of just letting, see how he turned away, he's like, just letting them know you can't take my space, right? That's a, that, that is actually the initial starting spot. The next level up from this is for me to go take his space, okay? So I'm gonna walk over there. I want him a little bit further away. So I'm trying to face away from him, but I, I wanna keep my eye on him at the same time. And again, this horse was a stallion up until a couple months ago, and we, we had to keep him separated because he was being so dominant towards the other horses. Now I'm going to own this space. So he doesn't necessarily love that idea, does he? So he wants to be over here. Can you guys see that? He's kind of like, wait a minute. That was my spot. And he's thinking about testing the waters with it a little bit. And so to me, this means that we've not done quite enough of pushing him around. Like there needed to be a little bit more of that. Um, it's great, you know, how tame you've got him in terms of making friends with him and touching him. And all I'm looking for, the change that I'm looking for, is for him to just be a little bit more willing to move out of there without needing to spank or, or touch him. But you can still see he's, he's unsettled about this idea. He's not thrilled. He knows what he knows what dominance games are being played right now. <laughs> I was wondering if this was going to come up with him at all. There. 
that's the first moment where he just kind of got a little bit okay with that idea of, of him not being able to push me around. Is that because you stopped moving your feet? Yeah, just, you could just see a little bit of a change in his demeanor. Um, he stopped moving around and yeah, you could just kind of feel a little bit of a, of a kind of a, a little bit of a let down there. I'm not sure what he's doing, but he, he turned away from me and he had his hindquarters to me and that was the initial problem that he was doing with Nettie. So it didn't matter to me what he was doing. I'm going to go, two eyes on me, we're cool, as long as you're not being dominant with your two eyes, you know, starting to pin his ears or something. But I'm not going to let it be okay to just walk up here and then turn away from me. You know, that's going to be the, the, the rule. But you don't, you don't need to just chase them around the whole time either. And that's kind of the point I want to make. Like, it's pretty clear that he needed to understand that he can't dominate people, <laughs> right? But at the same time, that doesn't mean we need to just drive him, drive him, drive him, drive him, drive him, right? So now I'm going to just play a little game about trying to get him to just look at me with two eyes. So now I changed. Now I changed the game to making it about um, having two eyes on me. So I don't want him to be afraid of me, obviously, when I walk here, but I don't want him thinking he can. Um, but see how now he's more in the concerned state of mind? Um, so this is a level up the, the ladder from where he was at when Nettie was first walking in here and he was thinking about put, putting his hip towards her. And so this is kind of where we wanted to be at. And I'm not going to do, I'm going to do a little bit of retreating in terms of a, a release there, but I'm not going to do a lot of that. So to me, he was pushing through pressure there by going all the way around me. So I added a little pressure. But he's kind of an interesting one because it's balancing, not scaring him. I'm doing it. But at the same time, make, making it clear to him that bringing his hip towards us is not an okay, okay response.
But see, even though I've whacked him several times, he's still thinking about pushing through me because um, he would rather be standing on this side of the pen than that side of the pen. And so he doesn't like that I'm asking for him to do this under my, my terms, not his terms. Honestly, I'm excited about getting the, the halter on him because I'd rather do this also with a halter on of drive him around because then there's just that many fewer mistakes that he'll make. Yeah, but he's, he, I think he's turning away now in terms of just uncomfortable, unconfident. So it's kind of a different reason. But it, it's hard to say exactly, and because I don't know exactly, nobody does. You want to be consistent with your pattern, and the even so, whatever, regardless of the reason his hip is towards me, we're going to say that's not okay. We want two eyes. That's where the relief is, right here. There, you had a letdown. Make a good decision. So, so just the way he's acting right now and how it's switching very frequently, I would much rather have a halter on him and be playing with him online than doing this game at Liberty because it's changed 50 times just from me being in here. Um, and it's, it's hard to follow all, the, all that. Because, again, I don't want I, I, to advise Nettie of what to do next. It's like I don't want her to come in here and just drive him around, but I don't want her to come in here and just rub on him the whole time either. It's got to be this balance of it. And I think that'll be easier with the halter on. So um, when I have you come in here, um, there's two options. I can put a rope on him, um, you know, right away. We could do that and then get a halter on him. Or if you feel like you could walk up and put a halter on him relatively easily um, in, in a safe way, uh, we can do that too. <laughs> 